Astrophotographers always ask me questions like, what is the perfect exposure time for astrophotography or how long should my total exposure time be in order to capture a great image of a deep sky object or how much of a difference there is when it comes to an image that has a total exposure time of one hour compared to an image that has a total exposure time of up to eight hours. And in this video, I would like to answer these questions by showing you sample images I've captured of the Orion Nebula. So in this video, I would like to show you the difference a long exposure time makes in astrophotography by showing you different images I've captured of the Orion Nebula. So in the beginning, I would like to start with an image that has a total exposure time of one minute. And after that, I would like to go over to an stacked image that has a total exposure time of 30 minutes. And in the end, I would like to show you the final image that has a total exposure time of up to four hours. So in this video, I would like to take a close look at these images and compare them when it comes to noise and details visible in these images. But first of all, I would like to start with a single image I've captured of the Orion Nebula. So this is a single image I've captured of the Orion Nebula with my home telescope. It was captured with a Canon EOS 2000D and a 150-750 PTS Newtonian telescope. So this is, this is a single light frame that was captured with my telescope. So one minute of total exposure time ISO value of 800. So as you can see, there are only a few structures visible in this object, but still you can see the Orion Nebula in one minute exposure time. So you can see that there is a lot of noise when zooming in, so you can see in these structures there is a lot of noise, and unfortunately you can't see that many details yet. So when zooming into the image you can see that there are only a few details visible, but still you can see the Orion Nebula. So there's a lot of noise, especially when looking in these regions, and yeah, that's not that good. And as you can see, there's a lot of noise and only a few structures visible. For sure, we can increase the brightness of this image, for example, which is what I did. So when increasing the brightness, you can see that more structures become visible, but still, there's a lot of noise. And this is the point where we astrophotographers use a technique called stacking. So stacking means combining multiple images with a single exposure time between one minute all the way up to five minutes. Sometimes we capture exposure times that are even longer. But most images we capture are in a range of one minute up to five minutes. In this case, I used a single exposure time of one minute. And as I mentioned, we astrophotographers use a technique called stacking, which helps us to combine multiple images to get a long exposure time, which would help us to have less noise in our final results and to increase the details visible in the framing. Therefore, I've stacked multiple images. In this case, I've stacked uh, 30 images in order to get a total exposure time of 30 minutes. So in this case, I combined 30 single light frames to capture this image. So 30 minutes of total exposure time. So I've stacked these images in Deep Sky Stacker and I've combined them, so these light frames with calibration frames in order to reduce noise and uh, get a better image. So I have used these light frames, so the images of the Orion Nebula with dark frames bias frames and flat frames. And in this case, you can see the image that has a total exposure time of 30 minutes. And when zooming in a bit, you can see that there is less noise in, your, in the final results. And furthermore, there are even more structures visible. So right now I would like to show you the three different images I've captured. So the image with one minute of exposure time, 30 minutes and four hours. And after that, I would like to compare them in order to show you the difference the long exposure time makes so when it comes to noise and the structures visible in these objects. So in this case, you can already see that there are more structures visible, especially in these regions here. And there's definitely less noise in these final images. And you can see that more and more structures become visible, especially in these regions. But now I've combined a lot of images in order to get a total exposure time of four hours. So this image has a total exposure time of four hours. And as you can see, there are a lot of structures visible in this object. And you can see that there's even less noise in this image. So a lot of structures become visible in these structures right here. You can see these darker regions right here and um, these colors become visible in these structures and in general there's less noise in these in these images and these very dark structures here in the front are visible in an image that has a total exposure time of up to four hours. And furthermore when looking into um, this region of the image you can see that even more structures become visible in this object. So this kind of region was not visible in an image with a single exposure time of one minute. Though not that good compared to that image. So after showing you the different images I've captured, there might be the question how much of a difference there is when it comes to noise and details. So now I'd like to compare these different 
images step by step. So here we go. So this is a side by side comparison of two different images. So on the left side, you can see the single light frame with an exposure time of one minute. And on the right side, you can see a stacked image of 30 single images, which results in total exposure time of 30 minutes. Now I'd like to zoom in a bit to get a closer look of the Orion Nebula. So when zooming in a bit, you can see that first of all, there's a big difference when it comes to noise and details visible in this image. So you can see that in, in this region, a lot of structures are visible. So especially these darker regions here, especially right here. So you can clearly see that you can't see these very dark structures here in this single image. So you can see, so you can see a bit of these structures, but in this image, it definitely looks better. And even zooming in, and even zooming very close on that star, for example, you can see that this star is surrounded by a lot of noise. So not many details are visible right here. And this uh, kind of image, you can see these very dark structures right here. And in general, there's less noise as you can see. And that's all due to using those collaboration frames on the one hand, and due to stacking multiple images, which is very important in astrophotography. And even when looking at um, the object itself, so on these very dark structures right here, so you can see that you can't see a lot of structures right here. And in this image, you can see a lot of structures. And especially in this image, there's a lot of noise. So um, you can't see a lot of details due to noise. And this image, very fine structures are already visible. So there's definitely a big difference when it comes to noise and structures visible. So in this case already, a long exposure time is very, very helpful in order to get a better image in astrophotography. But now what I would like to show you the difference between an image that has a total exposure time of 30 minutes and four hours, because still there's a very big difference. So right now you can see in side by side comparison of an image of the Orion Nebula that has a total exposure time of four hours and an image that has a total exposure time of 30 minutes. In this case, you can see that there are even more structures visible and there's even less noise. So even right now, the exposure time is a very, very important aspect that is very important if you would like to bring out a lot of details in your final results. So let's zoom in a bit, and as you can see, even more structures are visible. So in the very first image, only a few structures were visible. And in this case, you can see these dark structures. And in the final image, you can see that I was able to bring out even more details in these darker regions right here. And there's even less noise in my final image. So you can see that it's not that sharp and I mean, you can't see those darker regions, but still they are not that sharp and not that good visible. In this case, you can see that there's more sharpness and more structures are visible for sure. So definitely the long exposure helped me to bring out more details in this image. And especially in these uh, regions right here. And so these regions are darker compared to this very bright uh, center here. And you can see that in this case, um, you can see only a few structures in this nebula right here. And in this case, you can see that a lot of structures are visible. So um, this is the exact same framing. So you can see these two stars here and these two stars, so these three stars in here. So in this region, there are only a few structures visible, but in this image with a total exposure time of four hours, you can see that I was able to bring out much more details and there are a lot of more structures visible in this region. So collecting four hours of total exposure time definitely helped me to bring out more details. And even in the region of the Running Man Nebula, more structures become visible after collecting more exposure time. So you can see once again that here are that only a few structures are visible. It's not that sharp. And in this case, I was able to bring out a lot of structures. And when collecting in more exposure time, that would help me to get more details in that image. So now back to the question mentioned in the beginning of this video. So yes, the exposure time is very, very important in astrophotography because these objects are very dark. And when capturing single images, there's a lot of noise in your image and only a few structures are visible. But after using a technique called stacking, you will, you will get more structures in your image and you can reduce the noise in your final results, which should help you to create great images of deep sky objects. So as you can see, 
the difference between 30 minutes and 4 hours is very very big and even when collecting more exposure time so 8 hours, 12 hours, 20 hours or even more that will help you to have less noise in your final results and to bring out even more details in this image. So it was very very important for me to show you this difference because it's very very important in astrophotography to collect a lot of exposure time because a lot of beginners often collect a total exposure time of 20 up to 30 minutes and that's definitely not enough to get great images of deep sky objects, therefore the exposure time is very very important. Something I'm really really interested in is the longest exposure time you've ever captured of a deep sky object. If this video and this guide was helpful to you, I would really really appreciate a like and a subscription. Otherwise, thank you so so much for watching and until next time. Clear skies, Felix.